everyone. Uh, welcome. My name is Andrew Gehring. I was the narrator for the um, English uh, version of the podcast just now. Hello, uh, my name is Shu Hui Yao, and I'm the Chinese narrator for our podcast. And I'm Josue Vera. I'm the producer of this podcast. And welcome, many, many welcomes to all of you fine and noble people to our first discussion of episode one of our podcast, Shrouded Stories Beyond the Great Wall. We made it, you guys. We're we in this lovely it. little room and everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, episode one, episode uh, one. Pangu opens the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. Pangu, Kai Tian Yes. Yeah. Yes. So let's give a little bit of a disclaimer just to start things do. off. Yeah. Um, we are by no means professionals in this in this topic, <laughs> no. nor experts. Mm -hmm. uh, we are three fans uh, interested and in the topic, finding it out, and sharing what we find out with you guys. So, yes, enthusiasts. Yeah. yeah. It, learning in real time with you guys. These these questions we'll be asking, and and I should say that um, uh, I will be loosely moderating just because I have I I know so little and I have so many questions to ask. Um, but all these questions are all essentially ones I'll be asking in real time with you. <laughs> yes, you. Um, well, and yes. If I make any mistake, it's not intentional. If you have like corrections or other questions you want to follow up, mm. we have an email address. Mm -hmm. It's uh, contact at shroudedstories.com. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great. Shall we begin with with the the questions proper then? Yeah. Okay. That's so good. we begin with our 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 podcast with a creation myth. Um, so you're fitting. We'll begin at the beginning. So Shui, mm -hmm. these stories we're looking at, you have based them off of a, a source text that we're translating from. Yes. How? I mean, we're used to, I guess, in in the Western world creation myths that, that you know, are pretty stinking old. Uh, like, how, <laughs> might, might I ask, um, how long have these stories been kicking around? Um, I'd say orally, it's been more than 5,000 years. But, like, this text <laughs> that is, for the first one that I specifically, I grabbed it from a book uh, roughly around 2,000 years ago. Mm. But it's the the original version is already lost. But there's like a recorded version of that book later in a period that still exists. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it, the entire sort of story would be like four five thousand years ago, and like, ah, this is not doing well for me. Sorry, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> this is perfect. No, no, no. Good. yeah. So like that happens a lot with mythologies in general, right? Like. Um, it starts a very oral tradition, and at some point, someone decides to just get the best bits and write them down, and then go on from that. So, like this story we chose, uh, it was chosen. It wasn't like uh, the story that everyone had at that point. Like everyone had like different creation myths. Yeah, because like uh, in Chinese mythology, we don't have like a straight line to follow. So this happened, and that follows that, and that follows that. Uh, instead, we have lots of documents, um, like recording scattered stories. Mm. So a lot of historians are trying to make a line out of it, but it's pretty hard. Mm. Just for the opening, uh, how the world's open, mm. that kind of story, we have multiple versions of it. The one that I'm choosing is just like um, the, the most commonly taught um, by my generation. Sure, there's not like a mythological monolith. Uh, mm -hmm. No. Got it. It's fun to say. But yes, <laughs> well, it, 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 it makes sense for such a, a big country with so many different um, cultural pockets and so forth. Not that I know anything whatsoever, but mm -hmm. it, it, it makes good sense. Yeah. Shades and different variations of things. I mean, there are... Um, there are concepts that, like, we as, you know, Westerners, Westerners uh, <laughs> yeah, we said, um, are, we assume we kind of get it, but we don't actually get it oftentimes. If, if you don't mind, we'll, we'll, we can run through a few of the sort of basic fundamental concepts in the story just to make sure we're, I, I'm selfishly, <laughs> like, I'm on the same page. Um, okay. Yangqi and Yinqi. Mm -hmm. Um I guess, you know, for those of us who've consumed media that has, has some, you know, um, Eastern inspiration, we, we've we heard these terms yeah. peripherally, and we kind of have an idea of them, but I have a feeling that some of this is mistaken, um, if you could help us. <laughs> I don't know if it's mistaken, but, uh, but because, like, you've probably all seen the circle thing, yeah. and um, because it's black and white, it's kind of misleading thinking that one is good and one is evil. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but instead of that, we're more leaning towards like those are two opposing forces. But there's no like characteristics um, of good and evil. Um, no like, morality to it. N- not not that we we do usually associate like Yang Qi with worms, uh, masculine. Um, like sun hmm. and um, in chi more like dense um, and then darker in color and then female figures mm. but um, we wouldn't say everything in chi is like evil and everything in chi is um, good okay that's nice no 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 <laughs> truly tr- tr- I, li- I like the idea that it's not a moral binary that's yeah. being attacked it's yeah. more of a, a um I, I don't know, um, an energy slash elemental thing? I'm using words I don't really... No, know no, that apply. makes sense. The, mm. Elemental. Mm. It's it's like a foundation of the world, but it mm. doesn't actually have certain meanings or leading to something. Yeah, because like when, when Pango like, uh, split the world in half, it, uh, like the egg, like it was basically a separation of energy. Yeah. Like the yang chi like, rose to the skies and like yin chi descended to the earth. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, but we're still like talking about balance, I guess, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, because um, at the beginning, mm-hmm. like w- where the chaos was, um, it's it could be easily understood. Like for Westerners, chaos might be like born with uh, monsters and like evil stuff. But I think in this case, we're just talking about a mixture of uh, both energies, like the Enchi and Yang Qi, and then the separation of those starts the world. Right. Yes, I have questions about this too. <laughs> I, 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 no, no, I, I, I kind of, listen, I'm going to jump ahead to another question I had because yeah, yeah. that, that's the, what we're talking about because the idea of the very, very beginning of everything, mm-hmm. um, I mean, we talked about this among ourselves a little bit earlier that yeah. there is, a lot of us are familiar with creation myths um, in the West that have an idea of first there was nothing, then there was something. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are exceptions to this, but this is very particularly phrased as first there was chaos and then there was order brought to it. So I guess my question is like what what, what does that mean? <laughs> like, what, what is the chaos here? Is it... Um, is is it purely abstract and conceptual, or is it just a sort of literal like potluck of the elements? Because yeah. it's not the only the only story. Like uh, like Greek mythology starts with chaos as well, mm-hmm. for example. Yeah. So there, there's definitely a parallel there, but I guess like the whole like well, what is this chaos and how can we define it in this context? So I I feel like um, it, it it's more like a pot of elements, like you said. Oh, I love a good pot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, it's in a contained space, meaning, well, this is a personal guess, so uh, <laughs> might be wrong, but 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 I, I think it's a good start, mm-hmm. and I feel like there's something outside of it. So there's above forces, then what's just in there? Uh, we might be talking about those uh, in later episodes as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I don't, I'm getting ahead of ourselves, I'm sorry. We, we do no, want to... No, no, yeah, but but the egg itself and the chaos itself, um, my understanding would be like a mixture of um, the both forces, and um, because it's all mixed up together, um, you can't separate them. You can't make um, life out of them. But when they are separate and balanced, then the world starts. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. I, oh, I do like that idea. I mean, especially yeah, because we're talking a little bit about the things that are existing in the beginning. Mm. I I. Uh, uh, I guess the exception to the 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 chaos element that is here is is the egg, the giant, and the axe. Yeah. <laughs> so I, again, I don't want to be too literal about all of this because clearly we're swimming in the world of of metaphor and so forth. But the significance of this being being there is <laughs> is I mean. I, one doesn't want to, you know, be too infinite regression and say, well, where did this come from? Where did that come from? Because yeah. it, we start to miss the point of the storytelling. But because there's a specificity in, oh, there's an egg and there's an axe in the egg. <laughs> is is there like a is there an axe significance that we're missing culturally? Hmm. The tool itself, I not sure. Okay. Because like I I couldn't find it anywhere specifying why the axe, why specifically the axe. Hmm. But I feel like. That um, tool being there was a symbol of like the the uh, the giant Pangu was giving the tool to open up the world that he wants to see. Mm. I have yes, questions about this. Like, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Finish your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
What was my son? So he's he's given the tools to open up the world and like and see the world. Yeah, because he wanted to accomplish something. Um, like with the sex, he could accomplish himself. So, so there is. Sorry, go ahead. There is a story of agency. Yeah, yeah, agency. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's no Deus ex machina here. There, there's um, no um, intervention that allows Pangu to do this, uh, mm. except for the fact that you know, there, there's this axe lying around. It's almost like a hint. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It's good to be. It's good to have agency. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> that also kind of uh, flows in a lot of our mythologies and uh, like history story, historical mm. stories. Um, that. Um, a lot of uh, the storylines are based on the agency of the protagonist. Oh, that's a, that's kind of, that's empowering. That's <laughs> nice. It is very empowering. Yes. Yeah, because like it, it, there is an attitude of like yeah, you have an option to like do something and you have the tools to do it, so you mm-hmm. do it. Yeah. Um, which I, I think is very like for a foundation myth of like the creation of the world to have that kind of like connotation inside of it. I think that's very powerful, like like to the culture itself. I don't know. I'm not part of. Yeah, of course. But but uh, you know, our questions about sort of um, the the nuts and bolts mechanics of how this happened in, in as far as the plot points of this creation story. Our questions are not over. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I, as far as just the making of the world and so forth, we have we have this chain of events that can be a little bit, not head-scratching exactly, but it can make you do a double-take because he, mm-hmm. Pangu wants to see the yeah, world. That's the world. That's and then he idea. opens the egg, and becomes which the world. Become, releases the world. And then when he dies, he himself becomes yeah. the world. Yeah. So are we to understand that before you know, uh, Pangu's body became mountains and rivers and so forth, that the earth was more sort of a, in a barren state? Or, or w- does world mean something besides the literal planet Earth? Is it more like a universe kind of thing? Could, could be. It's, it's more like a, what is this space I'm in? I, I wonder. And then mm. he becomes a world. This is like specifically for the world that we were seeing now. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I, I guess there is there is a little bit of a connotation of like, if he becomes the world after he goes out to see it and et cetera, et cetera, and after like he separates the energies and, and all that, even if there was something before that, that's kind of like talking talking about like if something was there before the Big Bang, mm. like we, we, have, we would have no way at this current moment of knowing. Uh, but it's really interesting to like to have that kind of like feeling of wanting to see something that doesn't quite yet exist or does it? He doesn't technically know the world doesn't exist mm. until mm. after he opens up like, oh, there's nothing, and I want to do something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess that comes back to the whole agency thing. Yeah. yeah, there's something so beautiful about a creation being motivated by an act of curiosity. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's as opposed to, it, I don't know, a decree or so forth. I mean, decrees can be noble and beautiful too, but the, it, it's so... Like, if we were like in a creative writing class, we'd see, oh, these characters have so much agency. This, yeah. is, this is great. Well, I guess in a way they're so human. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's that kind of style of deity creature yes. as opposed to... No one's pretended to be omnipotent here. No. no. <laughs> you see a lot of uh, effort deities in Chinese mysteries. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll get to more. Yeah. <laughs> more, more. <laughs> those <laughs> stay tuned uh, my god um as far as a couple other concepts mm. um meridians <laughs> so yeah. this it's a fun word to say but it was also a word i had to sort of look up and even so i'm still a little bit iffy um mm. uh, on uh, first of all the very concept of it mm-hmm. and also how it a- applies to the creation of it was uh, roads uh, when yeah yes can you talk to us about like the translation of that word and how, what what <laughs> to help us yeah uh, of course uh, I, I was actually very surprised to find there's a direct translation for that word because mm. it's a very concept um, from the Chinese medicine so uh, like yeah, I I was having trouble to see if there's like a very con- concise. Uh, mm-hmm. translation for that mm-hmm. um, but, but in this case um, I can explain like how it works it's like a blood vessel but instead of carrying the blood mm-hmm. it's carrying the energy that's channeling throughout our body mm. Mm. and energy kind of like going back to the yang qi and yin qi yeah um, okay. but like 
in that case more combined than separate. Gotcha. But 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 there are books, novels, mythologies talking about you can only carry one type of them, and it can、mm. be elemental, it can be like nature, some kind of that. And is it like a physical thing? Hmm. It's an interesting question. Because <laughs> like、uh, me personally, I I have never seen that or touched it. But、uh, my mom, she actually practiced meditation and claimed that he, she can see some of them inside of her. Okay. But like when she was doing that in the morning, sometimes I'll I'll see her burp, and I'm guessing that's like tangible in some sort of way. Okay. So th- there is a little bit of like a physical effect. Yeah. And I guess if they did become roads,、uh, at, at least they were perceived as something physical. Yes. Yes. It makes sense. It's all coming together. <laughs> no. 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 Yeah. I mean, as far as、uh, probably, I, I, I confessed this to you guys earlier. I'll say it again. That probably my closest frame of reference for this sort of thing、uh, is. Are certain episodes of a certain Avatar: The Last Airbender, <laughs> in, in, in which we have which these concepts of、um, energy pathways in the body that can be either manipulated one way or another, or the the imbalance of which will create havoc in you in some way. So, I, I, if I remember correctly, that was like more chakra based rather than meridians. Oh, <laughs> thank you for correcting. No, I, I, this is. But good, it, there, I, there is a little bit of an.、Uh, I guess it could be an overlap because like there's a lot of like. Like their neighbors, so、mm. I, I guess there could be an overlap. But it's the whole concept of like there being something、uh, energy-wise that's inside of you and flowing.、Mm. Yeah. So. Oof, flowing. Yeah. 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 I mean, God, I, <laughs> it's it's a concept that well, I don't want to be too、um, broad about any of this, and hopefully、yeah. haven't been so far. But we are. With, oh yes, I do. I do have one question. Please, please. Eighteen、uh, thousand years. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. But you, you missed. You, yeah, you, I. Yeah, no, I, just, I just remember that. Like, but、yeah. like, why such a specific number for the the time that passed? Um, because we believe nine is the biggest、uh, number, sing, at least single digit numbers. So,、okay. and anything that's related to、um, like huge, big, and royalty,、mm. they want to. Have their numbers、um, have something to do with nines, or at least a multiplication of nines? Gotcha. And it, well, there was a saying that the、uh, Forbidden City,、mm. they、uh, they have nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine point five. Uh, <laughs> what? Point five. <laughs> Wait, do we know about the point five? Where did that come from?、Uh, It's like just a little closet on the side. Tiny bit bigger than the nine 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 nine. So.、Like, oh, I see. Okay. 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 But、oh. but actually, it's、uh, a little bit less.、Um, we don't know if it started with that many rooms, but right now it's sitting around eight thousand seven hundred something.、Mm. So don't don't、big. do count、uh, yourself. <laughs> you yeah, I promise you, I won't. Right, <laughs> these, these things can be powerful in concepts and、yeah. metaphor, yeah. perhaps more、yeah. than literal. But I mean, the world of sort of numerology and,、oh, yeah. and numbers and so like lucky numbers, unlucky numbers. I mean, yeah, like the、uh, number three and number seven are very、I've, very present in the Western culture. Yes, I've always been big on three. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was born on January third,、oh, so、really? the third day of the year. So、mm-hmm. I've always been a three person.、Hmm. Any lucky numbers, you guys? Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> no. But no, but like, but you know, as you say, three is not just particular to me. It's like it's it, so many.、Uh, uh, Um, so, so, so many, that, like, yeah, like, like Trinity. Yeah, you got, yeah, yeah. You got the Trinity. You got、uh, the whole like、uh, Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades.、Uh, oh, you got tripod. like、huh? tripod. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. So the, there, there's a、uh, there's a lot of like different places that just use numbers as a, as a way of significance, and I、mm. think that's just like a very human thing、uh, to do. Yeah. yeah. You said、uh, nine as、uh, the biggest single-digit number. Yeah, it、so. holds true in Arabic numbers as well. I, I was about to ask that sounds、uh, because I don't know anything about you know、um, Chinese writing systems. That sounds like an interesting coincidence that it just happens to be like before we move to two decimal places and, and or we move from nine to ten. Okay, that is that, that is beyond my knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. It's. It it it's, it's well, I makes think it it's ex- a ten based、uh, ten based system. Got it,、yeah. got it. Oh, I see. That makes it weirdly conveniently accessible for us, which、yeah. is nice. Yeah. yeah, I do enjoy numbers. So,、um, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I think we're at the end of. Are we at the end already? Episode. My God, it feels like we've gone faster than we meant to. Um, yeah, it's just the first, first, it's first true. episode. Of nervousness. Yes, and, and it's that. possible. Yes, for <laughs> assuming that this bit makes it into the episode, um, definitely a little bit of nerves coming up. But I don't. Th- we I think this still must have been. What, 20 minutes or so? Yeah, 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, we we decided not to record a particular sign-off for every episode. But <laughs> but for this one, maybe we'll just say thanks for tuning in for our inaugural, our very first little discussion for for these these uh, myths that we're going to be diving into. Yeah. Um, and we'll see you, we'll see you next time. For the next one. <laughs> Translation by Shu Hui Yao. English adaptation by Andrew Guerin. Music by Solwyn Locke. Sound effects by Shuhui Yao and Josue Vera. Art by Ursula Young. Produced by Shuhui Yao and Josue Vera.